I'm just fascinated by this. The, the, there's, I've never seen anything else, no drug, prescription or otherwise, no supplement, no um, workout that I'm aware of that creates that long arc of dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine release that one minute, one minute of being uncomfortably cold can create. Well, I was going to ask you about that that because um, the, there's a lot more papers looking at norepinephrine release mm -hmm. with respect to cold exposure, and that can be even 20 seconds, like at you know, 39 degrees or whatever that's Fahrenheit. The, <laughs> it's that, very that, cold. That, that quickening of the breath, that's a, adrenaline is, is an incredible molecule. But I'm wondering with the dopamine, what you think, and you know, this can be some of your opinion, is – the minimum like duration and what the temperature should be to get, you know, a, a, you know, inc increase in the dopamine mm -hmm. like peak above what you're at, mm -hmm. like like you're talking about. It doesn't say forty degrees for three minutes because forty degrees for three minutes at eight a.m. is going to feel very different than forty degrees at three minutes at three a.m. No one's doing cold plunge at 3 a.m. unless they're in SEAL team training or something. But if you're tired, you're stressed, people have different levels of, of um, excitement about the cold or fear of the cold um, and so on. H here's how I approach it. I think of everything in life as it relates to the stress system as coming at you in as like a wall, an event, right? It's, it's not, you're not thinking temperature and duration. You're not thinking, oh, how intense is this? difficult conversation on a scale of one to 10 and how long is it lasting? That's not how the stress system works. We tend to be confronted with stressors that we either know are coming or are not coming. So the way I appro approach cold is I look at the cold plunge and I think, how resistant am I psychologically to getting in it? And usually it's very, I'm not excited to get in. I'm excited about the feeling I know will exist when I get out. So I think of getting in as the first wall. It's like climbing over a wall. Okay, this is the first wall. I get over that first wall and then I get in. I like to lower myself to my neck. I like to put my hands in. I try and move my arms away from my body because I notice when the cold water gets to my armpits, that's when it really starts to be uncomfortable. And I pay attention to my breathing a bit or maybe I'll distract myself. I find it doesn't really matter. And what I'm waiting for is the first impulse to get out. So that's the second wall. And then I force myself to get over that second wall. And then what I start doing is I start counting walls. And most importantly, I start paying attention to how far apart in time those walls are. Now, eventually you just go numb and you're not gonna feel any wall, you'll go hypothermic. So you don't wanna do that. But what I generally try and do is five to 10 walls. And it's very interesting to notice how the waves of desire, these what I'm calling walls to, I wanna get out now. Now I'm gonna just go over this next wall and this next one. What that seems to do, and I realize I'm not answering your question directly, but the reason I'm describing this is that so much has been put to the time and the temperature, but ultimately we're, we are all highly individual in terms of how we react to stressors in a given moment. And what I find is that there's tremendous learning in noticing stress coming toward us, us confronting that stress, getting past that stress, and then moving, and then moving through it. And then when I get out, I always feel much better. You get that arc of dopamine release that's quite long lasting. There's no question. I mean, what you can like feel it in your body. You feel different. And then what I'm trying to do is attach the fact that there was a feeling of accomplishment in having gone over a certain number of walls. I don't tend to spend too much effort thinking about how I feel in that time. I just know that it's a complete state shift. I also know based on my reading of my sleep on my eight sleeper whoop, that doing cold plunge in the morning dramatically increases the amount of rapid eye movement sleep I get at night. And I don't know the exact reason for that. What are some other behaviors like, I, you know, that can help to replenish the dopamine pool? I mean, we're talking about sleep. That would, that would be one. Yeah. And also like how you were talking about just, just waiting too. like how, how long do you have to wait right. to experience that? Yeah. Well, cold shower is always great and it's not just zero cost. It'll save you on your heating bill. Um, cold shower is great. I think the high intensity interval training that I know you're a big fan of, that's a remarkable tool. Not only is it brief, but it deploys all these systems, these neurochemical systems that create alertness. Also, because it's brief and it does that, you're unlikely to fatigue yourself to the point where cognitive work is harder.
Oh. Oh. The tempo's not ceased, is it? I mean, it, they're just... What's happening here that it's as fast as what it was at the beginning of the match and we've had over 70 minutes. Oh, my word. <laughs> oh, a bit wild. Still going. That's a blinding <laughs> shot. Wow. That's a blinding shot. That is a straight kill on steroids. This study out of UT Southwest um, in, in Dallas by uh, Dr. Ben Levine was, is really what has convinced me that vigorous exercise is extremely important for, for, for the heart and the way the heart ages. So I mentioned cardiovascular disease. I mean, that's the number one killer in developed countries, right? Um, so as we age, our heart go, undergoes certain inevitable changes. Um, it, it gets smaller, it shrinks, it gets um, stiffer, less flexible. And this affects a lot of things. It affects our cardiovascular disease risk. It affects our cardiorespiratory fitness, the ability for us to do aerobic exercise. Um, and so what Ben did in this study, Dr. Levine did in the study was really remarkable. He took a, a cohort of participants that were 50 years old on average. And these were sedentary individuals that were otherwise healthy. So they didn't have any, you know, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, et cetera. They, they were quote unquote healthy, but they were sedentary. And he separated them into two groups. So the first group was the control group who did sort of stretching and yoga for two years. And then the second group was the exercise intervention group. So these are the people that were gonna be doing the exercise. Uh, and it ended up being a vigorous exercise protocol, but because they were sedentary, it started out sort of lower to moderate intensity. And by the time it was six months, these individuals are doing five to six hours a week of aerobic exercise with a large percentage of that time um, being in what's called the, the maximal steady state. So it, that's what I'm talking about. When you, you're, you're, you're going as hard as you can and you maintain that for about 20 or 30 minutes. So it's usually around 75, 80% max heart rate and you're doing that for about you know, 20 to 30 minutes. They also did the Norwegian 4x4 protocol once a week. And after two years, they essentially reverse these structural changes in their aging heart by like 20 years. So their, their hearts were essentially looking more like a 30 year old heart after that two years of vigorous intensity exercise. Now, like I mentioned, they were doing five to six hours a week of vigorous, a, lot, a large portion of it in vigorous, vigorous exercise. But it's simply astonishing, um, you know, the structural changes that they found so there was more, more than 25% improvement in the elasticity of the heart after those two years, um, particularly in the left ventricular um, muscle of the heart. Um, of course, they did increase their, their, their VO2 max by about 20% 20, 20 as well. So um, it's just quite astounding that you can take a 50-year-old, put them on a pretty intense exercise program for two years, and essentially reverse a lot of the structural changes that happen you know, in, in, with the heart, with the aging process.